Hi everyone, thank you for joining our live Q&A today. I'm going to now hand it over to our lovely lecturers to answer any of your questions. Good morning, my name is Victoria Cockrum. I am course tutor for Care and Early Years at the Mountain Campus. Um, I have been uh, with Brooks and Mountain College for Ooh, going on for 12, 13 years now. Um, so if any of you have um, been for interviews or applied, you might know, be are that you would have um, met me somewhere along the way. Um, I'll just hand you over to my colleague now. Hello, I'm Georgina Pearson and I am a training officer in childcare. Uh, the difference between my role and Victoria's is that I deliver work-based apprenticeships. So if it's the apprenticeship route that you're taking, then it's very likely you will see myself or one of my other colleagues who would come out to your work setting to carry out all your assessments um, and obviously set your coursework. Fantastic. OK. Oh, I think we've had the first question come through. Shall I go first, Georgina? Um, the first question is, uh, what are the entry requirements, which is quite a, a big, important um, question. So for childcare, the full time course um, at Brooks and Melton College, if you're looking for the level two in early years, we would be looking for you to have the GCSEs, one of those being maths or English and if you are looking to apply for the level three childcare qualification we would be looking for you to have five GCSEs. Now the difference is the, the levels if you are um, looking for level two we're looking around the grade three mark and for the level three we're looking around the grade four and above mark. Georgina would you like to do the apprenticeship entry requirements? Absolutely. Um, sorry, I can't see the question and answers live for some reason on my van. Uh, it's not coming up. Anyway, OK, so uh, entry requirements for the apprenticeship um, is slightly different to FE. It is based on um, we look at your grades you have achieved. Um, so the apprenticeship works alongside with functional skills. So if you have achieved a grade four to nine, which is an A to C grade um, old terms in maths and English, you do get access straight on to the level three apprenticeship. Uh, if you have one of these grades or slightly below um, on one of the maths and English requirements, you actually sit a diagnostic assessment, which we put in place for you at college and invite you in. Um, that diagnostic assessment um, then looks at what you're currently working on. Now, if you get over 55% on that assessment, say for example, that may have been the maths grade that you didn't quite achieve, then you can still have access to the apprenticeship. If you don't um, achieve those entry requirements on the diagnostic, what we actually do is offer you the level two course and you would do the level two course and run the functional skills alongside that to get you up to the entry grades to obviously progress then onto the level three. Could I just say for um, FE as well, if um, you, you get those results in August and you haven't quite met the entry requirements for English and maths, um, we'll have a conversation with you to, to see whereabouts um, you came. We may also send you for a diagnostic test and there is an option to be able to upskill alongside your qualifications. So even if, if you say you got a, um, a level four in English, you didn't quite get that in maths, we can then work with you to help you achieve that and, and um, get, get onto the course that you're looking for. Um, I've just had a notice on the question and answer. Somebody, we've had a lovely question, what are the differences between the childcare apprenticeships and how would we be assessed? So um, for, for FE, full-time education courses, you come into college for three days a week and you go out into placement for two days a week. So the, the difference there is that for full time education, you are having a lot of input and a lot, a lot of um, theoretical learning. And then you're going into settings to enable you to transfer those skills and you will be assessed by an assessor um, against set criteria to show that you are competent in, in doing that. Would you like to talk about the apprenticeship? 
Yes, the apprenticeship route is very different to FE. Obviously, FE is the full time course. With the apprenticeship route, you're actually employed. So you do have a contract of employment um, at the childcare setting and it is actually your responsibility to go out there to look for employment. There are things we can do to help you and there's uh, sites we can advise you like gov.uk um, that advertise apprenticeships. Um, but that is your employment. So you are employed for a minimum of 30 hours a week. Once you are employed, we make contact with your employer who asks us to come in and get you registered uh, to start your course with us, which is all done at your setting. You do occasionally pop into college. It might be a case of, you know, bringing some paperwork in to meet me, but work base is generally I come to you. Apart from when you do functional skills in maths and English and ICT, if you did not get these grades in school, um, and that is an evening attendance on a Tuesday currently, uh, where you come to college to um, get obviously that, those grades that you need as part of your apprenticeship. Um, you are assessed at work, so you'll be working in the room that you um, you may be working with a two to three year old, for example, and we will put a plan in place and I will see you monthly um, at work where I will observe your practice doing activities with the children and lots of different set tasks. And obviously you will have your coursework, which you set with me on those visits as well. So I will set you units of work which you will work through uh, ready for our next visit. So that's generally how the main difference is. Obviously, you get a wage for the apprenticeship, which is the minimum wage is currently £4.15 an hour, um, whereas obviously FE course is continuation further education. Uh, very similar to schooling in some respects that, you know, you continue with your education full time. Obviously, there isn't a salary with that. Mm -hmm. The full time course enables you to gain the experience to then go on and get a full time job, which leads me on to Eloise's good question. She's asked um, what jobs can you do with this course? So um, for the further education childcare course, you can go on and uh, gain a level three um, qualification, which is, is employment ready. It gives you a license to practice. And um, so you can work in a day nursery, preschool, fresh before and after school club as a fully qualified practitioner. Um, the beauty about our course is that it enables you to gain new points um, along the way. Each assignment um, carries points which total up to give you an overall um, number of UCAS points to help you go to university. And quite a few of our students use this as a stepping stone, an alternative to A-levels um, to enable them to go on and do um, degrees in early years, to be um, do teacher training, to work in education and also to transfer into other areas of, such as social services or even hospital work and play work. So actually the, um, the, the childcare course is, is a very diverse role. It enables you to dip into lots of different employment avenues as well. Um, would you like to add anything Georgina? Um, I think it, it is preference completely. Um, like Victoria says, if you want to go on to further education, looking at university, you do need to go classroom route. The apprenticeship will qualify you obviously to work, uh, like Victoria said, so day nurseries, um, you've got obviously the reception class in a primary school, um, which is only reception and any preschool uh, settings so you are qualified to do that however if you did want to go further on to looking at degree opportunities you will not have enough UCAS points with the apprenticeship to do that you would have to add add things to that. Mm -hmm. um, I've just seen another question pop up which asks about uniform and I'm not sure if you can see but for us um, for the further education we have a polo shirt that's very similar to this with early years um, written on there and we also have a more enables you to um, go outside and do the outdoor learning and classroom environment. But also a uniform is really important because it stands you out as a student, um, which means that if any parents or any other professionals come into the setting, they can see that you are um, still learning and training um, and will give you support and guidance along the way. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think apprenticeships wear their staff uniform, don't they, Georgina? They do, yeah, because you're obviously employed by the nursery setting, they will supply your, uh, you know, your company uniform. 
Yeah, brilliant. So they're quite nice actually. And you need you need a uniform, don't you? Because playing with Play-Doh, paints, bits and pieces like that, you, you want to make sure that you can get stuck in and not worry too much about dirty in your own clothes. <laughs> Absolutely. I've got a question here about how long do apprenticeships take? That depends on the level. So the average amount of time uh, for the level two is around one year. Obviously, we do take into account everybody's individual requirements and needs. Um, so, you know, we do do skill scans and talk to you about if there's any additional learning support you'd need. And that would vary um, and give you extra time on that as well. But the average time is 12 months, the level two. The level three average time again is 18 months for that. Uh, and just to add into that, the level two course is a one, one year course and the level three course is a two year course. Um, and across all of that, you have um, theory and units to um, present evidence and assignment form. But you also complete 750 hours of placement across those two years as well. So that gets you lots and lots of experience, not only to go into your um, your full time employment afterwards, but also if you're applying to university, it kind of sets your head and shoulders above um, because you've got the practical experience going into um, higher education as, as in a degree work, as opposed to just learning in the classroom as well. OK, so we've got a question here again about apprenticeships, asking about minimum wage requirements, 19 years plus. Um, and asking about obviously the responsibility of student contract the college the apprenticeship etc so i'm going to work through and answer that question um the minimum wage requirements are forever changing i mean we're obviously updated along the way and it would be very worth your while looking at dove.uk and just googling that one to be completely happy with it i know currently that the minimum wage for anybody on apprenticeship is four pounds 15 um, and that's only for a certain amount of time that they're actually on that apprenticeship and it just changed so i really would recommend just having a quick google on that to be a hundred percent um apprenticeship responsibility so the responsibility really is it's like you're looking for a job so treat it as looking for employment and all the places where jobs um, are advertised um, it's good to to access that have a really good job search google search i know it's really hard with places like job centers and things being closed because they do advertise uh, apprenticeships as well you can have a good chat with them um, but i really would start with gov.uk we actually use that as well as a college if any of our um, employers get in touch with us let us know they've got vacancies we actually put it on that site and they also have various other links so it's a great starting point um, Basically, you would go, you would apply directly to the nursery, for example, who's got that position, send out your uh, application form completed, your CV, and they would invite you for an interview. At that point, they normally have a college they want to use in mind, or you can obviously say, I've looked at Brooksby Mountain College, I would like to do an apprenticeship with them. Is that possible? We obviously have lots of connections with, um, with different organisations. Um, so they it is their choice who they go with. I, I, I'll, I'll let you know that. Obviously, you do have a preference. So you could say, you know, you would like to do it with us. And at that point, we could get in touch with them. Um, so you go along for that requirement. If they offered you the apprenticeship, they then get in touch with us or you can also get in touch with us uh, through our inquiry service. Drop us an email and we will then speak to the employer of the setting. We'll set up everything we need to do uh, with our contract uh, with the employer. And we'd also come out to you and talk you through the entire process. So there'd be contracts that you would sign between us and the college and the employer. We'd go through all the terms and conditions, which we discuss through everything on an induction. Uh, regarding coursework, books, uh, support and things like that, we, it's all online. All our portfolios are online for work based. So we have that constant communication between each other. Uh, we use a system called OneFile. So you have a unique login, you log on there and that's all of your course, which is on there. Really straightforward to um, use. You basically have a task box and everything your assessor sets in there uh, comes into there. The unit or the support you need for that unit. Uh, you also have obviously your deadlines. It tells you how to submit it when you're ready for that unit. Um, and obviously there's that constant communication because you can message your assessor 
um, with any questions that you have. So yes, there are books that uh, go alongside and we definitely recommend those and we bring you all the information for those on induction. So you can obviously uh, get some resources that work alongside your course. I hope that's uh, answered that question for you. Could I just cut in um, and say that um, sometimes apprenticeships are a little bit difficult to secure um, and uh, quite a lot of our students tend to come and join us on the um, first year of the childcare course and use that as a stepping stone. Then it enables you to go on to placement um, and work in, in settings that are likely perhaps to look for uh, apprenticeship vacancies and transfer at the end of year one onto year, year two would be um, the opportunity to be, become an apprentice at that time. So don't be disheartened if you're feeling as though you, you desperately, desperately want to be um, look for an apprenticeship and there isn't any vacancies at the moment. The full time course would be a stepping stone and a bridging gap between that or you might decide that after you've done that first full year that the um, the placement side of it has, gives you the practical experience and you're going to stay on and, and gain the, uh, the full level three qualification to enable you to just go straight into full time employment from that. For the full time course, we have a textbook. I'm not sure if you can see that particularly well and um, that we use quite a lot during our education um, lessons but also there are a whole range of different textbooks looking at childcare and early years that will help and support you and part of the academic journey is enabling you to dip in and out use the library use the internet and to, to help further your knowledge and understanding of areas by doing your research on that as well um, hope that answers answers that part of the question i'm just looking i think we've got another have we got another question on apprenticeships? I can't see. No, I think we've answered that one. So I'm just having a, a think about what else we can tell you about. What do you think, Georgina? Let's have a look at my list of questions. So we've done entry requirements. We've done obviously what uniform to potentially use. Uh, what days of the week will I come to college? Ah, good question. <laughs> So for full-time education, um, you will be in college for three days a week and out in placement for two days a week. We sometimes send you on block placement weeks as well, um, like fun times the week before they break up for Christmas, where you can enjoy a lot of the, um, the hands-on things. Um, but a lot of the time we try and keep a balance um, between college and coming into placement. Now the days do vary year on year as to which um, which days you'll be in college, but as a general rule, you tend to be in Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, out on placement Thursday or Friday, or we flip it out on placement Monday and Tuesday, and then in college Wednesday, Thursday or Friday. Um, when does the course start is a good question. No? It is. So we would be looking for the full time college course for you to be um, coming down on um, exam results day and enrolling. And we then begin our induction week, which I think is about the 7th of September this, this year, to be fair. So we, we, we keep you a little bit, um, don't have you quite as soon as um, the schools go back but we, um, we work quite hard and have you in for an induction week and then the lessons and the delivery start the week after that as well. Georgina, you're a rolling programme, aren't you, for apprenticeships? Yes, apprenticeships basically start all throughout the year. As soon as you have secured yourself an apprenticeship and got a place of work, we come out to start you as soon as that actually happens. So there isn't a obviously set start and finish date for apprenticeships. Mm. Well, I'm just going to jump in and say that we've got some welcome days um, scheduled in and for us it, it is Wednesday the 1st of July and um, obviously we um, we can't have you in college at the moment but we can go live virtually like this as well and we've got some activities and um, bits and pieces planned for you to enable you to um, Get, get used to us um, um, before those GCSE results come out. And it'd be really great if we could see lots of people um, on there accessing and, and getting a head start on their, their learning and their, their next part of their learning journey as well. So if you haven't applied or um, you have had an interview and you haven't yet accepted your place, 
please, please make that a priority. If you want to come to us, make sure that you you bag that that spot um, and that's yours ready for, for enrolment day when the GCSE results come out in August as well. So I'm just going to confirm um, what the framework is for an apprenticeship because uh, a few of you will have heard about a framework to achieve. So there's the childcare element um, which we work through. There's 23 units in total uh, for the apprenticeship and they all cover everything that you will be doing um, as part of your job role working with children 0 to 5 years old. On top of that, if you do not achieve your maths and English grades four to nine, which is the A to C in maths and English, you will attend an evening course. So after work on a Tuesday evening, which it is currently quarter past six till half past eight, and you will do your maths English um, where it's a 12 week block and then you will sit your exams uh, then for that. And also there's ICT, which is part of the framework. Um, so again, you'll just sit your evening courses to do that. So there's three functional skills. Obviously, if you did achieve your maths and English at the, uh, the four to nine grade, then you will be what's called exempt from those, which means you will not need to go to the evening classes to obtain those as part of your course. As well as that, there's something called employers' rights and responsibilities. We call it the uh, ERR, and all that is is understanding the rights of the employer and your rights as an employee. So you're understanding the whole framework behind uh, contracts and your rights and responsibilities um, that underpin all of that, which is obviously something the government put within the apprenticeship. So you're fully aware of, of, of all those rights as well. And that's what makes up obviously your apprenticeship. Mm -hmm. If I could just clarify what, what is involved in our full time courses for the level two childcare, you have got um, assignments to complete across the, the academic year, which is an int introduction to working with children um, and gives you the, um, the, the background and the, the ground to enable you then to transfer on to the level three course. So the level three, with it being over two years, you would do um, seven units in the, the first year and six units in the second year. You've also got a professional practice portfolio that, um, that goes across both years, which will include observations, professional discussions, evidence of you showing that you can um, do what, what we talk about in class in practice in the setting. But we've also got two external exams as well. And these, um, these are open book assessments, which enable you to gain um, a lot of UCAS points from completing them um, and go towards your overall grade of your qualification. So at the end of your level three, you can come out with a level three childcare qualification that's graded from D or through to A star as well. So lots and lots of, of information and topics that we cover um, across both apprenticeships and further education. So we look at development, health and wellbeing, health and safety. Um, we also look at additional needs, managing children's behaviour, all of the practical skills that you will need to be an early years practitioner um, working in, 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 in the, the job sector this, this, at this time of year. Now, we've also got lots of different activities on our virtual open day as well set out for you. We've been working very hard in our department and we've looked at the topic of census which will really give you um, some really good insight into what uh, working in childcare in early years is all about. There's some videos on there, there's question and answer sessions from um, some of my students this year, but also more importantly, a lot of is for you to have, have a try at doing. Um, and remembering, of course, that you are the practitioner, you are teaching the children alongside um, the, what's what's going on, not just doing the activities for yourself because they're for So one of the activities is going on a scavenger hunt and looking at um, things that you can find that's so nice or are rough or it's smooth. So you'd be thinking about as a practitioner how you would see that and um, encourage the children to participate and ultimately learn from it because I think Georgina would agree with me. Work with children isn't just playing with them all the time, is it, Georgina? Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> you're helping them to learn as well and um, you know you're getting stuck in you're wiping noses you're changing nappies and that kind of thing but you're actually focusing on learning and, and developments as well I was just looking through the back through the questions actually and I've seen one here that um, 
I haven't answered, so I'll do that really quickly. Um, you've been advised to hand out your CV currently on a different course. When would you be advised to uh, branch out to two settings? Um, you said June. I'm presuming June this year or possibly June. For, I'll, I'll presume it's June this year. Um, I would definitely get your CV out while you're continuing to finish the course that you're on. Uh, you can write on there with a covering letter. This is what you're looking for and actually put specific months and you would be available. I think sooner rather than later would be great. Um, you can always reinforce that by a, a quick email or a phone call to the nurseries to speak to the manager. So I think, yes, definitely go ahead. And one other question quickly was, um, is there apprenticeships available in, in reception classes in school? So the early years educator, which uh, apprenticeships we were discussing today are available only in the reception class because the qualification only goes up to five years. So it's what we call the early years foundation stage which reception children are still under that curriculum. So yes, they are. Um, and you can complete um, an apprenticeship for reception years. There is also a res um, an apprenticeship for supporting teaching and learning. Um, if you want to go for the older age range, so from year one uh, right the way uh, through actually um, till the end of uh, school because it goes into secondary as well. And that is called supporting teaching and learning and it's something definitely go onto our website, have a look, have a read and you'll be working as a teaching assistant alongside a teacher. Again, the same thing applies. You need to find a job, an apprenticeship within a school. Um, in that role, which is quite tricky to find, if we're being honest, but they are there. So it's, you know, hunting for those, branching out to school, see if they have got event, uh, apprenticeship vacancies. Um, and the same applies. The assessor will come out to see you monthly in the school setting. <clears throat> and obviously that's a slightly different qualification. So the early years educator goes, he goes up to the age of five. From there, we're looking at the STL, supporting teaching and learning in the classroom. OK. There's just another quick question there, Georgina. The level three childcare book I showed, is that suitable for you on an apprenticeship? We have a different one, Victoria. I can't show you, unfortunately, because my camera is not working, which is really disappointing. We do have a different book. It is it looks identical and actually it's um, called working the workforce. It's the work. So it's the early years educator still with cash, but in the bottom uh, column it says classroom or workforce so work based sorry uh, so it's the work based one however when I do come and see uh, my students I bring all of that paperwork with me and show them the actual book so you can't be confused and it goes through every single unit in the correct order and supports you through every part that you would need to, to work on so it's a fabulous book and I recommend all the students to have that Okay, everyone, that is the end of the session. If you have any further questions, please email courseinquiries at brooksbymelton.ac.uk. You can also apply now on our website, which is www.brooksbymelton.ac.uk. The email and our website is now shown in the live Q&A section. Thank you so much for joining our live Q&A today. Enjoy the rest of your day and we really hope to see you soon. Take care, everyone. Bye. Bye.